Hey, what's up? This is Ed from my Bring Back, making some art tutorial videos. I'm here to tell you that data is going to come your way in a lot of different formats. Now, for these videos, we very almost exclusively use the CSV format, which is fine. It's great. It reads into R easily. But in the real world, you're going to see a bigger variety than that. You're going to have things coming your way in a lot of different contexts, a lot of different types. And fortunately, though, also in the real world, R is well equipped to read these things in pretty easily. We're going to take a look in today's video at how to read in different types of files, different types of formats, and some pitfalls you can encounter there. And I appreciate your attention as we move forward. Okay, so if you open up our base R GUI, we can see the script I've got written for today's episode looks a little different. We're going to revisit some of the syntax we had for navigating folder structures within Windows or for that many operating, for that matter, any operating system. We're going to set our working directory into a tables folder I've made just for this episode and then print the contents of that directory. So we run those lines. We can see got four files in there. Got a CSV, something called the DIF, a PRN, and a TXT. Now those are all things I just exported out of Excel real simply and easily. You know what CSVs are? DIF is called Data Interchange Format, I believe. PRN is what you get when you tell Excel you want a space delimited file. And the X table of text is just the tab delimited file. So there are ways to read all these different things in. And one way that you might be tempted to do it lazily is to use a function that R provides you called read.table. And if we take a look at the documentation on read.table, oops, we're going to want to type a question mark instead of a slash. We can see that it reads in the format and attempts to create a data frame from it, but it doesn't work perfectly for all types of extensions. So we're just going to run that format, we're going to run that, uh, that function on each different file in our directory, so for i in directory, print the name of the file, give me some asterisks to separate it out, show me what read table looks like when I run it, and then print some more asterisks to separate it. So if we reach those four files, we should see some stuff. Let's run this, check out our output, and wow, it looks like we had some different things come out of here. So in CSV, it didn't work. We only have one column, and each column has the text up there. This is why we read CSVs in with that read CSV function specifically. In the diff file, we once again have one column, looks very different, and we can see that that particular extension doesn't work well for R <laughs> with just that base read table format. Much better on the PRN file, but it looks like it didn't take our headers correctly, which is surprising. And the same thing is true for the, the space separated, so read table may by default not give headers as columns. But you can see that works relatively well in some contexts, not as well in others. Some of these things would be easy to clean up, others would be a lot of work, and so you can look in R, the different options you might have for reading things in, hit read.tab, you can see the different things that are there by default. So CSV and DCF and delimit, delimit two. So you can read the help files and those to understand how to use them. Alternatively, you always have the option of opening in some data up in something like Excel, which has an expansive library of automatically slowing and saving it in a format you're more comfortable with. So CSV is the ones that I tend to stick to. If you like tab delimited things, there's not a big reason to argue with you. But those are some options you have. Just wanted to show you what read.table does when it chops things up and let you know what's there available in space. Now, one thing I can probably imagine a lot of you want to know right away is what about Excel files? I get a lot of work done in Excel, and I like using that format. R works okay for Excel files. There's a few different ways to do it. Sort of the most uh, established one is a bunch of Java code they've hacked into it under the XLSX package and it works fine for smaller things it's a little slow for larger files I'm going to show you the syntax and if you can make use of it successfully that's awesome for you I really do tend to put things in CSVs uh, it's a little bit easier for R to parse them but if you want to open an XLSX file you're going to want to load that module up so you read that XLSX package in you'll see uh, you're going to have to load up a few dependency packages as well and let's go ahead and run the code underneath it here, which is to put some more bars in there and then read XLSX on that table in an XLSX file. Now you'll note that the syntax here is just a touch different from the other things. We have two arguments. One is the file name. The second argument is the number one. And so what you're doing there is indicating which sheet number in the Excel workbook you want to read. If you recall, Excel files are 
workbooks is what Microsoft calls them and workbooks can contain multiple sheets so you have to go through the trouble when you're in R reading an XLSX file or an XLS file from older versions of Excel of specifying the sheet number and that way you'll get the data you want on the page so let's go ahead and grab these lines and run them into the console here and look how about that comes out beautiful and perfect which is something that goes to show you if you use the right function you're going to get the right output just about every time so understanding your inputs and the format they're in understanding RSK capabilities will allow you to read data right the first time have it in a workable format and get to doing your analysis right away now what I've showed you today is by no means a complete list of what R can open. As you can see, you can load up modules, load in packages, and extend the functionality of what's available to you. There is stuff for opening SPSS files. There is stuff for a huge variety of types and extensions. So do some Googling, do some reading, do some searching. Just wanted to show you how these things work. And again, my name is Ed. I work for my brain bag. I take great pleasure in making these R videos. And I also take great pride in knowing you guys watch them and hoping you learn something. So please keep coming back. And I'll do my best for you. Thanks a lot.